That's how it ends. <laughs> 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 there it is. Oh. There we go. I had to throw that together real quick because the last the last show you guys did, you guys had the guest. Oh. So I had to redo like a whole video. So. Oh no. Yeah. Well, Rory, now now I wish I would have worn my boner jam shirt. Show him, show him. Yeah. <laughs> Bienvenido, bienvenido, mi gente. It's metal miracles con mi hermano puntiagudo. Oh, oh, well, what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry, it's English. My bad. Well, welcome everyone to another Metal Wednesday with your host, Jay Hannon. You first. Um, yes, and me, Boner Jams. With many boner jams. <laughs> Say hi, Rory. <laughs> semi, semi jams. And then on the top left corner, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Johnny Bean. Hey, welcome, everybody. Later. All right. I'll, I'll be around. I'll be here. Okay. No, no, everyone's going to leave now if you leave. Have fun. Say hi, <laughs> have everyone. Have fun, later. kids. Hello. Rory wanted to come on. She she always says she wants to stop in. So I'm like, all right, Rory, why don't you start the show with us? Because you have to go to bed in a little bit, right, honey? <gasps> yeah. Do you want to say hi to Ellie? I bet she's watching. Say hi to Ellie. Hello, Ellie, if you're watching. But hold on. Hello, Hello, Ellie. Ellie. I'll, see you. I'll see you on the playground tomorrow at lunch. <laughs> so that's what that sounded like. Yeah. Rory, uh, why don't you tell everyone some of your favorite bands? Tell Jay some of your favorite bands. Mm, I don't know. You don't know? What uh, What about Gizmachi? We've been listening to Gizmachi a lot lately. Yes. What other bands? Uh, Slipknot. Yeah. What else we got? Talk uh, loud. I want everyone to hear you. Who else? Who else? Oh, El Ellie said hi. I just got the text message from downstairs. Ellie oh. said hi. Ellie said hi. What other bands do we like, honey? What about that new Gojira? That's the new hotness, right? I know. Yes, I like that one. You like that one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like one. I like one of them too. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, any anything uh, anything else you like? Mm. Do you like playing my guitars? Yes. Yes. Okay. Which guitar do you like playing the best? Yeah. Which one do you like the best? This one. Show show them. The blue one. The blue one. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> break it, you body. <laughs> Wait, let me do this before you break the house. Okay. There we go. Okay. Here, come back. Hey, Rory, tell Daddy that uh, Ibanez now makes, well, they've been making them, but tell him to get you a micro guitar. They're three quarters the size of that one back there. I'm thinking about getting one for Ellie. Really? Mm -hmm. Can we down tune those too? <laughs> G sharp <burn. laughs> We'll go straight Meshuggah style, right? Yeah. Remember we're listening to Meshuggah before? Yeah. Yeah. We like Meshuggah too. Yeah. Anything else you want to say before you go upstairs? I don't know. I think grandma's watching. Wanna say hi, Grandma? Yeah. Say hi, Sandy Miss High School Football Rules. Sandy Miss Rules. All right. Bye, All right. Rory. Say. Here, get down. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, go upstairs. Okay. I'll see you in a bit, Bay. All right. I don't think we've had such a um, we we haven't we haven't topped that intro yet. This is the best intro we've had so far on the Metal Wednesdays. That was it was good. Yeah, it was real good. How's everyone doing, Jay? How you doing? Doing good, man. Had a uh, a fun day. I did. Jeannie didn't. How so? Um, I took Ellie for uh, we went to Dick Sporting Goods. Nice. I got her some things, some uh, a soccer ball, a baseball mitt, some other fun stuff, and then um, brought her for ice cream. Ooh. And then she was completely pumped. But you know, that's that's kids. Yeah. And uh, left Elliot, left Jeannie home to work, and uh, with a one year old. So, as you can tell, I had the fun day. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you sign Ellie up for softball or? Baseball? Not yet, man. I think it's like seven years old by the time. I looked, I tried, I tried doing like, um, maybe T-ball we could probably do yeah. next year, but, um, soccer, I think the first league is like seven down here or something. I don't know. I got to do a little more investigating, but got to get her into it. Good. That's good, man. So, so, uh, so let's, let's chat a little bit about what we're going to go over tonight. 
Well, wait, wait. Don't we have to do um, a little bit of the particulars? There we go. Tonight's show brought to you by the following executive producers on the Johnny B Network. We have Charles Green, Wayno, Joe Christian, Michael B, Thomas Santiago, Music Therapy Laz, Bent Tom, The Chad, James Gum, Michael Smith. The Captain. There we go. There we go. Steve Franklin, Dan Halen, Johnny Moronic, Jimmy Ray Hawkins. I don't know why I had to sing Johnny Moronic's name. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Mike Neese and Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael. It's, if, if Killian screaming in the background wasn't enough for that. <laughs> Become a channel member. Click the join button. Come on. Join. Also, tonight's show is a, a podcast, so if you can't get enough of Jay's beautiful voice or mine, podcast, do it on all those and the, the bottom right, Grinder, right? Google, Grinder, Stitcher. Browsers. <laughs> Bang Bros. So, um, yeah. And also tonight, an exclusive event. Any what? Super Chat, no matter the amount, gets a free Boner Jam shirt. Wait a second. Wait a second. What if somebody, Johnny, what's the minimum Super Chat? 99 cents? Uh, John Biel. Come on, I, I I think it's a dollar ninety nine. Johnny, or, uh, I think Brian, you got to make it at least. You know, Google gets thirty percent of that. So what's thirty right. percent of a dollar ninety nine? How about you? So, better rethink this. We'll start the show over. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, roll the music. We'll talk. We'll talk about the price. <laughs> All right, let's let's go five dollars, five bucks and up. That sounds good. There we go. <laughs> You know, I feel like Oprah. I'm just going to give shit away. <laughs> you get a shirt. You get a shirt. <laughs> Check under your chairs, everyone. I was in your house before <laughs> you even got the show. <laughs> Might be there. So, uh, yeah. So we went through the beginning. Jay? Yes. Tell us what's going on in the world of gizmachi oh you want to start with the gizmachi stuff first i don't know what is going on um well well the cds were about to get delayed again but i guess um there was a little discrepancy with the artwork on the actual cd itself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whereas mike who was in charge of a lot of that um that stuff see with the artwork on the actual cd itself mm -hmm. whereas mike who was in charge of a lot of that um thank you did you pause that <laughs> <laughs> let's hope that doesn't keep going huh oh, that was weird anyway um i guess after seeing the uh the proof for the cd itself mm -hmm. the artwork is a little I don't want to say not lined up right, but that's not the that's not how it is. It's not exactly as he envisioned it. So one option, and I know I'm letting you guys in on a little maybe too much than we should, but whatever, right? Um, don't send Brendan anything. <laughs> um, Look at his face; he's so serious. I couldn't even hold a straight face for that. <laughs> uh, what you gonna call it? Um, so if we changed it and had it kind of resized or re whatever the hell. It would be another like month before we got the CDs. So we're pro are, did we make the the decision to just go with how how it is? Yeah. So yeah. Um, Mike emailed last night, and then we get an email today. He's like, "So I'm assuming you want to keep as is," and it was just like, "What part of let's go with as is didn't you understand?" <laughs> I think he just wants to make sure before he goes ahead and pulls the you know pulls the trigger. Yeah. Um, that everybody's cool with it. I mean, I'm fine with it. Whatever. So we should have them, what, by the end of next week, you think? Tentatively. Yeah, and I'll do a um, – maybe I'll do like a live unboxing video uh, depending on what day I get it because um, I'm going to get the CDs first. I have to sign a booty load of them and then ship them up to New York with uh, with a bunch of shirts and, and merch and, and stuff like that. Yep. So, But, yeah, they're coming. And then we got – uh, I guess our next single is going to be dropping in about a month, maybe five weeks. 
And we got a lot of work to do on that one because I got to relearn how to play the song if we're going to do any videos for it. Yep. yep. And um, got to do a music video, all that fun stuff. So there is still things going on. And anybody that's either listened to the album, streamed it, purchased it digitally, thank you very much. Uh, we definitely appreciate all that stuff. So, yeah. That's awesome. And everybody in the chat, say where you're from or what Gizmachi song is your favorite, and I'll do a roll call in a few minutes. And so also, you got Brendan Butt Cheeks with the uh, $5, so he's getting a shirt. Yep. And the Music Therapy Laz says uh, he's going to get one too. We got you, Music Therapy Laz, slash I got you, because I'm not going to send it to Jay to send you, so I'll send it. <laughs> What sizes do you have? You have doesn't matter. Small, medium, large, extra large. Cool. That's it. And then if we have to go bigger than that, we can go moo moo. I'll just sew a couple together. I can. Yeah, do just just. <laughs> we can, Is Gizmachi going out for live dates? Well, as of right now, there's nothing on the uh, schedule, but there's a uh, chirping within the band, pretty much on my part that nobody really knows about that, you know, possibly if the opportunity arises to do um, like a festival next summer, whether it be in America or Europe, um, that is a chance, but obviously everything, you know, the planets have to line up brother <laughs> for that to happen. So, and thank you. Michael B says the Omega collide lyric video was awesome. I agree. And our drummer, Jimmy, did that. And I, you know, I thought that I thought he was going to do a a, a, <laughs> a bang up job or anything, but he really, really crushed it on that. Like, I am very, it's hard for Jimmy to impress me because I've known him for so long now. He impressed me with this video. He did a very good job. He did. Yeah. So I have some breaking news from the world of Gizmachi, which you don't even know yet. Would you like me to share? Yeah, shit, yeah, let's do it. No, it was actually, I was talking to Jimmy earlier. And we oh, were talking well, about... So does he know? Well, Jimmy knows, yeah, because he... We were talking about the next single. Uh -huh. We were talking about Jimmy starting to work on the next video. Mm -hmm. And um, you know what? No. Nah, no, I, I want to know now. No, he's just... He has some ideas. He has some ideas. I, I don't want to throw them out to everyone, but it, it's... It'll, it'll be cool what he's going to do. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, you know, we uh, something happened and we sold 10,000 <laughs> records already. You guys went platinum. One we, went sold. we went cobalt. But then, oh, in the first week since the uh, album dropped, how many how many streams? It was pretty significant. And, yeah, just on Spotify, I thought it was uh, over 20-something thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Music Therapy Last says, Turn to Dust is one of his favorites. Well, stick around. <laughs> yeah, also in the chat, yeah, tell us some songs that you like from the album. Tell us what you think of the album. Tell us what you think of uh, Jay's shirt and then my shirt. Just, just tell us what you think in general. But yeah, Turn to Dust is a great song. Yeah, I dig that one. And then also, uh, there's another song on that album that, that may do something so again this is all in the uh the beginning stages so anyway yes yes yeah a lot of cool stuff though so either some cool stuff is going to happen or nothing's going to happen <laughs> one, of, one of the two so i i guess in the meantime i'll do a quick roll call um jeff brand says i thought this was a chat about cubs opening day <laughs> is that your friend yeah it's gotta be what's up jeff <laughs> Well, he's also a Bears fan, though. Yes. Well, I feel bad for him. Obviously, we're Bears fans, and it's just what a, what a shit show it's been. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, CK says, uh, I seem like a cool, like a chill, cool guy, or chill guy, kind of cool. I'm okay. Sometimes little, I'm all right. Little do you know, CK. Little do you know, man. Yeah. And Butch Jones is not here again tonight. Sorry. I know we've uh, there's been a lot of requests for Butch to come back. Um, but we'll get them back on not either, tonight. On, a, not either, either on a Friday or a, or a Saturday or something like that. Um, so I'll do a quick roll call while we're, uh, while we're sitting here getting ready to talk about 
some cool metal stuff. Um, yeah. So here we go. There's not many people chatting in the chat room right now. So everybody say something. Go, hey. <laughs> go, uh, I don't know. I was going to make fun of something, but I can't think of anything to make fun of. Bang energy. Let me do a Mancuda ad real quick. <laughs> He's got my wife drinking this crap. And now I'm drinking it. Anyway, we got Brendan Buttcheeks, uh, Browns fan, CK, Cameron Brown, my buddy, all the way from across the pond, Chris Bevan, Clayton James Hicks, 1998 Hicks. He says, today is Wolfgang Wednesday. I think you're right. Jeff Brand, John B., Johnny Bean, Michael B., Music Therapy Laz, Michael Nightbot, and Vistalight1972 are the only people that have commented as of now. Michael. We're 18 minutes in, folks. Come on. <laughs> let's get the, let's get the uh, chat rocking here. Michael Nightbot. I like it. Yeah, Michael Nightbot. Yep. So, Chris Bevan. Did I say Chris Bevan already? I think so, yes. Okay. What's up, Chris Bevan? Jay's origin Van Halen story, please. Um, Wrong night. Yeah, wrong, wrong night. night. Metal Wednesday. I'll get to that. I'll talk about that Friday. You got to come back Friday. If I sit here and talk about Van Halen for 20 minutes, Boner Jams is going to this is going to be the last show we ever do on a front on Wednesday. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, actually, in all seriousness, I've been listening to uh, some good amount of Van Halen lately. Roth or uh, Hagar? Hagar. I, I get I, – we'll talk about it some other night, but I just uh, – I have to change it pretty quickly. I kind of get annoyed. <laughs> I, I just don't like it. I'm sorry. It's not hey, dude, we're all allowed to like whatever the hell we like. So we the, can make fun of each other because of it, but you know. So, uh, then I have a question for you. Remember the, um, that the um, Hagar song, Heavy Metal? Yeah. What year did that come out? Oh, God. That was before he was in Van Halen, right? Oh, hell yeah. That was like 79 or something, wasn't it? 80? Okay. I can find out real fast. That was on... Um, 81. 81? That was in the Johnny movie Heavy, Heavy Metal. That's a good song. That, that song's a shit. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, I mean, we can, actually, let's, let's talk about Van Halen because I have some questions. Johnny, you can partake in this since uh, I heard you're like Van Halen too. but uh, I've heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Dabbled in some Van Halen. Dabbled. The, yeah, that's uh, on um, that's on Standing Hampton, which is one of the best raw uh, raw uh, Hagar albums, solo albums. So he was selling out arenas, not like clubs or like smaller venues. Hagar was selling out big venues prior to joining Van Halen. Why would he go into Van Halen when he was already kicking ass on his own? Like what? What made him change? You asking Johnny? You asking me? Both. Well, if you if you read Sammy's book, he kind of he says when he came off the VOA tour, which was the album came out in '84. Um, he came off the VOA tour what in the beginning of '85 or something or end whatever it was, and he said he was burnt out. And his wife at the time, I guess you know she was kind of like whatever you know, and he was just gonna like he cut all his hair off. He was gonna take a big break, and. Uh, Next thing you know, he got that call from Eddie and he was telling him like, I'm listen, I'm, I'm not really, you know, maybe I'll come down a couple of weeks or something. And Eddie was like, no, I'll come down tomorrow. And he, Sammy says that he was not looking, looking to join Van Halen at all, but he said, screw it. I'll just go down there and see what those guys are about. And then he said the second they started playing together, he was just like, this is magic. I, I can't not do this. Mm -hmm. You know, so that uh, what <laughs> John B. wife at the time, ex-wife. How about that? But if you, <laughs> if you read Sammy's book or, or listen to it like I did, you know, I guess that wife, his first wife, um, you know, she had like some mental issues and stuff like that and whatever. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Like, you know, he's done. He did the Montrose thing. He did the solo thing. You know, he was. You know, I, I think he kind of uh, gets a little overzealous with the selling out arenas and stuff he did pack them in but it wasn't at the level of, of van halen at the time sure. you, know, but, you know he was selling out places but uh it Some wasn't chance 
Yeah, the chance, yeah. No, he, he was playing, you know, think of that that record, VOA, with 55 just alone, you know. That that record, that song was huge. So, anyway, that that's the thing. It's like, I don't think he was looking, he says he wasn't looking to do it, but he said the second he started jamming with those guys, he was like, this is a no-brainer, I have to. You know, and it was obviously a pay cut at the time for him because he was joining a band with four other guys as opposed to him being, you know, paying the band that he was with. So, yeah, I'm glad he did it. Johnny, you have any anything to chime in about that? Yeah, I, like I mean, something what, wrong, Johnny. <laughs> what what Jay said? No, no. I mean, he 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 uh, he went down, rehearsed with them, and as soon as they started playing, they're he's like, I, he just, he couldn't turn it down. I mean, it was, I mean, I hate to say it, but that was true. You know, it was better than anything he had ever done, <laughs> you know, on his own. Yeah. And he knew it. He knew it. And that's why all these, all, you know, all the years, you know, he wanted to get back with, with Van Halen because there was something there that wasn't, that he didn't have before or after. Yeah. You know? And if he if he hadn't got into Van Halen, maybe Jay and I wouldn't even have discovered Van Halen if it wasn't for him. I mean, me at well, least. My brother, you know, I had he already had me listening to the some of the Roth stuff. So, but mm -hmm. I had heard the Roth stuff, but I, I I wasn't a fan. I liked Hair and Eddie on the Back to the Future uh, movie, but when I bought Fifty One Fifty, it was because of because of that combination. And you know Paul on the on the late on the Saturday night show, Brian. He always says it. He's like, you can't like chemistry is is a natural thing. You can't force chemistry. And I think that's what Sammy knew. He's like, me with Eddie Van Halen, it was like just holy cow, you know. That's the thing. You can't. You never know. It's like friendships too. It's like you meet somebody, somebody you meet. You're like, yeah, they're cool. But then you'll meet somebody else at the same time, and something happens with the personalities and just something clicks, mm -hmm. you know, and you can't explain why it does, you know, sometimes you're friends with people that you don't really have that much in common, but for some reason, the personalities, it just works, you know? So. Mm -hmm. And that sound too, the sound of Hagar's voice and Eddie's guitar. I mean, it's, it's perfect, yeah. you know, for, for, for what they were doing. And we've, we've all heard Eddie play with, with other people, you know, outside of Van Halen and, and it's still great because it's Eddie, but it's it doesn't have what Sam and Eddie had or Roth and Eddie had. Yep. You know, they that band was very, very lucky to get that twice. Yeah, it's hard to catch lightning in a bottle once. And they got mm -hmm. it twice. Cool. Um, yeah. Didn't um didn't they want Joan Jett to be the singer prior to Hagar? Is that true? Or is that a, a that was a discussion apparently? Well, Patty Smythe was a uh, oh, Patty Smith, that's it. Smith Smythe. Yeah, supposedly yeah. she got offered the gig, but from, she was pregnant at the time. Scandal. Yeah, she was pregnant at the time, and also wasn't she on the? She was in New York, right? I think Rock. she was in New York, and she didn't want to like Maybe. you know obviously yeah about to have a kid. She didn't want to go coast to coast and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, John Bon Jovi was in was in her band. Either he was in the band or he's in the music videos playing guitar. I think John Biel, where are you? Wake up. Was <laughs> John Bull. Yeah. It John was Bull. it was scandal. The band Scandal with Patty Smythe had John Bon Jovi as like the or the, no, he was the second guitar player. He was the rhythm player in some of those music videos. That's so weird. Which would have been East Coast. Yeah. I have a problem with John Bon Jovi. We could talk about some other time. <laughs> well, did, did, speaking of, uh, did you see what's his name from Journey today? I don't know if it even it might have been an older article, but it popped up on my Facebook today that, uh, um, oh my God, Steve Perry, Steve Perry, so like he said that he thought that he was going to be trying out. You know, he thought he might have been up for the gig because I guess right before or when Roth left. He would he would have these late night conversations with Eddie, and they would like talk about jamming together. And for some reason, they just it just never happened. And then he said, next thing you know, Sammy was in was in the band. So 
You know, but who knows? I mean, I don't know if that would have clicked either. You know, his voice was like so perfect singing those songs with Journey and obviously his solo stuff that, you know, I don't know if it had, if he could have had the attitude to sing the Roth stuff, even though Sammy didn't sing that many Roth songs. But, you know, Sammy still had his own thing that was very unique. Nobody sounds like Sammy Hagar. I don't care. Everybody can take a knock on Van Hagar all they want. Sammy's voice, I've never heard replicated even close to what he sounds like. There's tons of guys that can sing like Roth and do the Roth shtick. But Sammy, for some reason, I haven't heard anybody that sounds anything like him. So take the, take it or leave it, you know, for, for better or for worse. <laughs> I think we're on it. What do you prefer, Hagar or Roth? They're both perfect for the time. I mean, I said this before, that if, if Roth would have stayed in Van Halen, I believe that the next album that they put out would have crushed again. But then once the 90s hit, especially when grunge kind of took over, you know, I think Roth still had that stigma of, of being like the glam or the hair type of thing. And I think that's what ultimately killed his career. Not killed it, but you know what I mean? Like when he left Van Halen for the David Lee Roth band, he was still selling out stadiums. He was on top of the world. And even when uh, Skyscraper came out, he was huge. That was 88. But then all of a sudden, the time started changing. Roth's voice started going. He wasn't able to do the, the you know, the cool Roth train screams anymore and all that stuff. And his shtick just wasn't, wasn't cool anymore. Yeah. You know, so I think, and Johnny said this before, Sammy got into Van Halen at the perfect time for Van Halen. You know, that, that's, and I think that's true. It really is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here, I'll jump in for a second. Yeah, we're talking Van Halen. Hey, come on in. <laughs> I know all about this stuff. Yeah, I mean, Sammy Hagar was 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 perfect for, for them. And and again, by 1994, Roth was his career was over. Yeah, you know, he was putting out records, but they weren't selling. And then he he went to Las Vegas and did his thing, and it just wasn't. And then after that, he basically became a, a Van Halen tribute band, yeah. which is kind of weird. Yeah, you know. It is. And I, cause I saw him on the <laughs> Sam and Dave tour, <laughs> Brian, I saw him on the Sam and Dave tour and Roth every night they swapped. So Roth would open one night, Hagar would open the next or that night. And then they'd switch, you know, Hagar would open. So when we saw him, uh, Roth opened and he had, you know, a guitar player that was literally, I, who was it at the time? Johnny, you which, know, right? which year? When did the, when was the Sam and Dave tour like 2002? 2002. 2002. 2002. Right? Uh, I know that, that number for Roth. It was a future drummer of Corn, Ray Luzier. Yeah, was it then? Mm -hmm. Wow, because he's a great drummer. He is yeah. filthy. But yeah, Johnny's right. It was almost like a tribute. That might have been Brian Young, maybe. Hold on, I'm getting a delivery tomorrow. I got to approve it. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Who was uh, it? Uh -oh. Brian, Brian Young. Hear you. Oh. It might it might have been. Delivery information. The uh. safety and health of our customers. <laughs> kind of a delivery. Yeah, CK. Yeah, it was Brian Young. And actually 2002 I was working at a guitar store in Berkeley and he had come he was in the store. He came in. But I didn't see him. I mean, I didn't realize he was there. And after he left, one of the other employees, he's like, he's like, check out this guitar pick this guy gave me. It said Brian Young, and it said David Lee Roth on their side. You know, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um. But uh, I don't did know you see that tour? No, I didn't. I didn't. So, what do you prefer, Roth or Hagar era? Don't give me like they're equal. No, like if you're like, hey, I'm gonna go through that one. I started on the Roth era. Okay. I, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I start. See, Hagar. No, I started on. Well, it's the truth is I started with Roth because I mean that's I saw their music videos, mm -hmm. the hot hot for cheat teacher Panama jump. I remember seeing those videos on MTV when I was a kid, and I thought they were funny. You know, I thought I mean hot for teacher it is funny. It's a comedy. 
you know? Absolutely. Awesome. Love that. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. So, so I, I thought it was funny, but I wasn't, I wasn't, a, a, I didn't become a fan until, until the movie back to the future with that cool guitar part mm-hmm. on the cassette tape. Right. I heard that and I'm like, Oh, I got to play guitar now. Eddie Van Halen, you know, and then it just so happens the next Van Halen record that would come out would, would be 5150 with Sammy Hagar. Right. So I go to target, you know, they got 5150 on one display, eat and smile on the next. And I had to go Van Halen because that had Eddie and you know, first song on there. Good enough. I mean, it's just, it's classic Van Hagar from the get go, you know, right into why can't this be love? I mean, it just, it, it doesn't stop. It's well, just- the, the way, the way that album opens, I mean, it's just, you know, Sammy, the new singer, hello baby. It's like, hell yeah. It's coming right in. It's fun. Um, yeah. It's fun. And it is different. You know, I know when Butch was on here a couple weeks ago, Johnny with us, you know, like it's, I understand the whole thing of like, it is different, but it's still Van Halen. Like once, you know, if you're thinking it's, if you're trying to listen to the Hagar era, like it's the Roth stuff, it's, it's not. Mm-hmm. I, and I, I agree. I, I, I understand that, you know, if, if you started on a band and then they changed or a, a member changed and it wasn't what you're expecting. It went in a different direction. So I totally get it. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I run a Van Halen group. I see this stuff every day and I, I totally get that people, people feel like some people feel like they were cheated out of, out of their band. And for, for 30 something years, they've wanted their band back. You know, I, so I get it. I get it. But myself, I grew up on both. I love it all. And it was always about Eddie to me, no matter what, no no matter who was there. Um, I like Van Halen three, but I'll admit it didn't have what, what Hagar and Eddie had. It didn't have what Roth and, and Eddie had, you know? Yeah. I I think uh, if it would have been a solo, well, technically it was a Van Halen solo record an Eddie Van Halen solo record. If it was instrumental, you know, it might have been different. You know, if it was billed as an Eddie Van Halen solo instrumental album, then I think people they might have uh, uh, took to it, you know, in a different way than 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 they did. So both of you guys listened to Hagar first, and then went back to Roth era, and then you're just like, I'm in. No, no, because my brother had me listen. I th- I want to say Fair Warning was the first van halen album i remember listening to so i remember my brother bought the cassette and i remember sitting in my room like staring at the album cover and having it on going wow this is like this is eerie like this is like just creepy this whole album you know and it fits like you know how you talk about when an album cover fits the music like that album is perfect because that's a very dark album it has a very like kind of it sounds great obviously but it's something about it sounds sounds mean mean street obviously he starts the whole thing but um Mm -hmm. it's just i still remember listening to that and then i remember before 84 came out there was a radio station that we used to listen to in illinois it was a rock station obviously and they had this this thing they'd ever they do if they like premiere a new song i forget what the hell they called it it was almost like um like call up and tell us it sucked or call up and tell us it was awesome it was one of those things you know, yeah. I forget what it was called, but but Hot for Teacher was the song that they played. And I remember my whole family was in the kitchen, my parents and my brother. And I remember listening to it, just hearing it at the kitchen table going like, this is cool. You know, was, what was I, nine or eight, eight years old? And I was thinking like, this is really cool. You know, but it's like, I don't know. Smash or trash. It was something like that. Yeah. Yeah, you might be right. Um, hit it or quit it. <laughs> hit it or, <laughs> or hit it and quit it. <laughs> well, that intro to Hot for Teacher is awesome. Oh, it's it's great. That's what I'm saying. Like Van Halen has so much cool, cool stuff that you know. There's a reason why they're one of the best bands ever. You know, mm-hmm. that, but- and there's and there's enough for everybody. You got your first six records, the seventh if you count Different Kind of Truth. Hagar, all all those records, 
I mean, there's, and it's all Eddie. So that, that's just what's so, so weird about, about the, just the whole Roth versus Hagar thing. I've, I do understand it, but it doesn't apply to me and it, it never did. But I, I can see if there was another band that if I was into from the beginning and then, like I said, you know, changed. Yeah. I think Johnny and I are, are at that. Uh, we're pretty close in age. I believe we're both about 21 and uh, <laughs> <laughs> almost. You know, well, yeah, almost. I'll be, yeah. Um, you know, so like we both were at that age of like, you know, we weren't it was, like Van Halen was still new to us. It wasn't, and we didn't understand how, like how the, all the bands worked and all this stuff. It was like, Oh, Dave Lee Roth is out. Sammy Hagar, the guy that I'm seeing on MTV with three lock box and, and, you know, driving a Lamborghini, that's the new singer. Cool. Like, you know, it wasn't like I hadn't been listening, you know, I wasn't in my late twenties or early twenties listening to Van Halen since I was, you know, 10 years old or something mm -hmm. getting pissed. It was like, Oh, cool you know i it wasn't we didn't have that attachment to that yet <laughs> so no no yeah oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah and, ferrari and, and, thrash metal sorry i was a ferrari you're right yeah and it's only rock and roll too you know and maybe it's a production from what i've been listening to but it sounds eddie was a little raw in the earlier albums mm -hmm. right as if so mm -hmm. it was more production or was it the playing that changed it was less production. The playing didn't change. Well, it, yeah, it, it did. Well, he, he was focused more on songwriting than than being the guitar, uh, you know, hero. Loso, yeah. That's what that's what Roth wanted. Roth is like you're a guitar hero, you know. And and once Hagar came in, uh, I think Edward was frustrated for a lot of years because he couldn't write the type of stuff that he wanted to write. And his main instrument was piano, which a lot of people don't don't uh, know or realize. So he wrote a lot of stuff on the piano that he would apply to the guitar later. And that goes back to uh, Fair Warning, like yeah. you were talking about. You know, and yeah, I am younger than Keith Richards. This is a tad. And, and that's the thing too, like Brian, you mentioned, you know, I think, you know, being, I think when you get in a band with somebody that like Sammy wrote all of his solo music, he was a songwriter and a pretty good guitar player. And I think when he got in the band, you know, Eddie kind of, uh, you know, maybe some guys need that extra kick sometime, not extra kick, but Maybe he felt a little, uh, you know, I got to impress this guy. This guy writes songs too. You know, maybe Eddie, you know, mustered up a little more, uh, you know, and just maybe, I don't know what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say this, but maybe he felt a little more pressure to really, really write some, some kick-ass songs. Not that the raw stuff aren't great songs, but I think the songs are, are more, uh, how do I say this without taking a, you know, it's not like I'm saying anything negative against the Roth era, but I mean, the Sammy era songs, they're the songwriting, you know, whether you like the songs or not, the songwriting is like top of the world, you know, all that stuff. It's, it's great. The songs, the, are great. the arrangements. Yeah. It's the arrangements. And I think Hagar had a big, had really had a big thing. He was really responsible for those Van Hagar arrangements. Yeah, you know, Sammy really brought like a like a pop element to the band that that uh, wasn't there. CK, you're talking about Mick Jones, a foreigner, dude. I've been watching a lot of I don't know how I got into it, but the past couple nights I've been watching a bunch of foreigner uh, stuff and Mick Jones stuff, um, and learning more about that band. That's something I I, I didn't know. I mean, not that foreigner is metal, but you know. <laughs> Foreigner was Mick Jones' band. Like he ran that entire band. I never knew that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, it was like his group. Um, and then yeah, he 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 uh, uh, produced uh, or co-produced uh, Fifty One Fifty. We produced Sammy's vocals. You know, you know. Mm -hmm. So was synth in introduced in the mid eighties, late eighties? Early, early. It, it, technically, it was it was introduced. Well, not synth, but 
uh, 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 a rock uh, organ was introduced in 1980. Mm -hmm. You know, what song in the chat was the first Van Halen song with with the technically it's it's an electric piano is what it is. Gotcha. But but yeah, 1980 and then 81. Uh, uh, Jean Biel, where are you? Um, what you're doing now? What's the tune? Right before went for the out the door. I can't think of it. Sunday afternoon in the park. Sunday afternoon. Yeah, there you go, Browns fan. You got it. Yeah. Uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, synth. Uh, and then he he wrote jump during those same sessions, and he like I said, he he played a lot a lot of keyboard stuff, you know, at home. Um, and applied a lot of that to the guitar. You know, the song Unchained was written on piano. And Isn't you can that tell weird? By... A, a song written or a riff written on piano is one of like the heaviest yeah. hard rock riffs ever. It's written but on you, piano. You can tell by the attack of the guitar. You can I could totally hear that on the piano. You know, dun dun dun. You know, this hand. Eddie does a lot. What what something I've I've learned is he does a lot of awesome like octaves on the lo the lower register of the piano, like super super low stuff with the left hand, which. I, you can definitely see where he applied that to the guitar with the drop D stuff, you know? Um, and speaking of uh, when you said he wrote Jump, uh, Brian, listen to this one. So Eddie wrote Jump, and then Roth was one of the ones who fought having that on the record. And it obviously turns into the biggest Van Halen hit ever. Mm -hmm. And the one that Roth always hangs his hat on, you know, it's like, <laughs> you didn't even want the song, you know, but Hey, song makes you that much money, I guess. Uh, and then, and then th didn't he, uh, didn't he say that they filmed that at, like on a $600 budget, the video for, uh, for jump with like a handheld, uh, camera, <laughs> the one they ended up using. Yeah. 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 Sound like his yeah. mighty budget. It, that's oh, shit. His Machi budget. <laughs> I wish we had a six hundred dollar budget. <laughs> so yeah. was it um, Van Halen then introducing synth to, let's say, rock music at that time? Because there's no one else really doing it, right? Well, the synth stuff was really big with with the new wave stuff mm -hmm. right. that had that had already been happening, like Depeche Mode, Depeche Mode. Uh, Duran Duran, you know, Nick Rhodes, you know, his stuff. Um, so it, it was already there and it was kind of, I don't think it heavy, though. like Depeche Mode and Duran Duran and New Order. That wasn't heavy stuff. And that was a little different music, but for heavier rock, yeah. was there anything else like that? Uh, I, I, I think, I think there was, but it was more, it was more cheesy. Okay. It was more. Well, it added. PK brings it, up Rush. Rush at that that early stuff was not <laughs> cheesy. Cool. Like if you think the stuff on like twenty one twelve, it was pretty damn heavy with uh with uh Getty's keyboards. But it was more of like an extra instrument. Whereas the earlier Van Halen keyboards keyboards that was like the main thing in the song. Like like you mentioned, Cradle uh, Cradle will Rock. That's yeah. the main instrument you know yeah. there's no guitar in it it's the keyboard and, so. and the, the way he got away with using that is he played it through his amps yeah. so it sounded like a guitar mm -hmm. but if you really listen to it you can tell the attack it's not a guitar so what's the first pop pop hey. van halen song with keyboards <laughs> <laughs> brian's like all right enough van halen here god how to get my yeah. pop. Pop. The, the, fir the first what the first pop van halen song with keyboards because Cradle of Rock's not it. It's besides not Jump? Song. Besides Jump? Um, yeah, besides Jump. I mean, there was every since 80, there was keyboards on every record. Mm -hmm. Although you didn't necessarily hear it. Um, there, there was a song. There you go. Dancing in the Street. Oh, okay. That, Jamie, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a keyboard tune. Um, and then they have a song called Secrets off Diver Down that actually has keyboard in it, but you don't hear it on the regular version. You hear it on the single version from the 45. And it's very, very loud in the mix. Like you totally hear it when it, when it comes in. 
Um, yeah, I would. Yeah, just like uh, Jamie says, I would say "Dancing in the Street" was probably the, the the first, as far as pop, and then, and then from there, uh, jump. And I, you know, yeah. part of the thing, and I know we'll get to the metal in a minute. We apologize, but we have more viewers now that we're talking about Van Halen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, this is stuff I know. So. But uh, oh shit! What the hell was I even going to say now? Oh, so. If you were a huge, if you were a huge Roth fan, and you were kind of skeptical about Sammy, right? The first single they release is "Why Can't This Be Love," and it's a keyboard song with virtually no guitar solo in it. I could, I, I would have been pissed too, you know. Like that's the song they're gonna, they're gonna come out with. Like that's the first single is. You know, so but I understand, and and everybody mentioned that CK, you know, Roth was rock and Hagar was more had more pop, even though their biggest pop song is Jump with uh, I think Roth sang that one. Um, you know, mm-hmm. so I can understand a little bit of like, oh come on, you know, it's that first um, impression that people got that were huge Roth fans of Sammy was that, and I can understand how people were probably like, son of a you know, come on, <laughs> you know, but Man. whatever. So I see my mom creeping in the chat, mom. So make sure you, uh, you chime in here. Why didn't you introduce me to Van Halen much sooner? What's wrong with you? Did she like Van Halen? <laughs> my mom does. Yeah. So yeah. What, what's the excuse there? Awesome. It was just always Beatles. The Beatles. The Beatles. <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> and when uh, I was old enough, I just basically took over the house with music. So it just ended. You know, it was like third grade, new kids on the block. Hell yes, yeah, then. That was <laughs> Hanging tough. That sounds great. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I, I remember that too. I hit a certain age and all of a sudden it was, uh, well, my brother, when he still lived home, he, he ran the roost as far as music, but it was the same type of thing. Like if my brother wasn't home, you know, my parents weren't listening to the music anymore. It was, it's my house. It's yours. Yeah. That's how it was in my house too. Hell yeah. I don't know how that's going to be when Ellie hits a certain age and she wants to listen to something. Turn it down, you know. <laughs> no, you're gonna you're gonna always be like that. It's like that now. Brody's 13, but he knows he won't try to pull some crap and listen to some stuff I don't want to listen to. <laughs> he's like, he's never be like, hey dad, we're gonna listen to Juice World. No, you're not. Not in my car. <laughs> you want to drive? Take the wheel, then you can listen to whatever you want. No, he'll be like, oh, can we listen to New Gojira or whatever? He's because he knows he likes it too, but yeah. Well, Ellie's starting to get influenced by uh some YouTube videos that she's been watching these uh, Jillian and Addie she watches. And I guess they like uh kids bop or something. I think oh, I, I might've talked about this before. That stuff is terrible. But Ellie, Ellie loves crazy licks. That's like her favorite band. But every once in a while she'd be like, I want to listen to kids bop. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but then it's funny though. Cause then after a song, she's like, okay, I want to hear crazy licks again. I'm like, yes. There you so, go. But that's what happens. Once kids get around other kids, you know, they all of a sudden they get brainwashed into, into liking some crap. Yeah. But she'll have no choice, man. She'll be the cool one going to school or whatever, you know, with the Metallica shirt or the Van Halen shirt. And yeah, she'll be the she'll be the cool kid. Good. So Johnny, stick around for this. I want to get your opinion. So uh, one of the topics we wanted to discuss tonight. No more Van Halen, guys. We're done. We're done. Uh, we're going to go to metal. As now. the viewership goes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Jay, you saw the, um, well, let's talk about the uh, MTV videos or just videos in general. Uh, so what I wanted to discuss tonight were like some videos that we all grew up to or you would stay up late. This MTV was awesome. Like yeah. you knew there was going to be premieres and I would have my dad and I'm like, dad, go downstairs, 8 PM, make sure you're there. 7:58. start taping it. So when I get home, I can watch it. And he's like, do you need me to go back downstairs? I'm like, just leave it going. Just make sure 7:58. tape it. Don't mess up. You know? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, uh, yeah. There, there's a, just a ton of videos growing up that just, just gave me the feels that I wanted to talk about. And there's obviously some really good new videos as well over the last 15 years because MTV is now defunct and it's a reality TV show, you know. Yeah, they want to make money. It's terrible. MTV is terrible. But, uh, Johnny, do you have some videos that just 
just does it for you in the downstairs <laughs> bonanza area. <laughs> uh, well, what year did you start watching MTV? Um, like, well, like what, what, when you think of MTV, what year do you think of? The end of elementary school, like sixth grade, seventh grade. So, um, I don't know, mid nineties for mid-90s. me. Jesus. Oh that my was almost God. The end of MTV already. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, just, I, I just turned 40 last month. So man, I, oh, shit, I, was, I remember when MTV launched, I was sitting in front of the TV watching the whole thing happen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a little younger than you, but, but <laughs> for me, for me, MTV is, is 1983, 84. Okay. And it's, it's all these bands that now I love, but then didn't know who they were like the police. You know, I remember the video for, for, uh, uh, don't stand so close to me. The song's awesome too. And, and, and seeing, you know, see you know seeing the band members and then and then later on just andy summers from that band became a huge influence to me years later um it, it got me out of the of the that style of of playing you know it just changed it just changed you know what i did and and i'm i'm grateful that that uh, i discovered him and and his stuff but anyway for, yeah for me it was it was uh well, it's, again, not metal, but you know, Duran Duran, Reflex, that was on all the time. Um, Got you by this time. Yeah, that's a good ass song, man. The Reflex, that song's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then when when they kind of busted up, I mean, they sort of. There was this band called the Power Station. Yeah, Andy and John Taylor, Robert Palmer, and and if you listen, if you listen to their stuff, eighty-eight, huh, sweet child. 88 top videos for 88. Yep. Every day you would see each one of those. And it's day. all rock. It's all rock on that, man. That's what's awesome about it. There's mm-hmm. some pop stuff on there too, but there's, you know, once it got to like 1990, 91, it started to turn, you know, more towards the other stuff, you know, with the hip hop and stuff coming in. They, they started doing dedicated programs to different genres. Yeah, I remember like Yo MTV raps and 120 rock, minutes and all that stuff. Rock was the main thing, and yeah. then they had the they had, they had the rap part. They had the pop. The the, the uh, what was it called? Uh, they had like a, like a dance, like a pop dance show with with with, with uh, downtown Julie Brown. I Love think me. downtown Julie Brown, we're coming at you. <laughs> um, she did kind of a it was kind of a Dick Clark kind of thing. Richard where Clark. It, where it, where it was like a um, uh, American bandstand type of thing, but on MTV. Yeah. So that was the, that was the pop the pop part, but but the main you know those later years 88, 87, 88, 89, 90, It was it was all the years of of the well metal hair metal right you yeah. know. But then like Guns Headbangers and, Ball, Roses. right? Huh? Then Headbangers Ball came in. Started bringing, started bringing the real heavy, heavy shit. Here we go, into the yeah. metal now. Yeah, yeah. Headbringers Ball, which was, was that Saturday nights? Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah, Saturday yeah. Night. It was like midnight, eleven p.m., midnight, whatever. But I would say yeah. after that, hell yeah, I was so pumped. And then through the week, they would have you know commercials for it, like oh, we're gonna premiere the new Pantera video or whatever. It's yeah. like, you know, it was great. But the the only thing, the only issue I had with headbangers ball is every once in a while, they'd still sneak in like some, some glam video every once in a while they throw it. And I like firehouse and they'll make fun of me, but every once in a while you see a firehouse video thrown in on headbangers ball. Then you could see it on Ricky Rackman's face when they, you know, come back like, all right, we're going to have a firehouse. But like, sometimes you could tell like that. He was like, come on guys. Do we really, right. the people watching just don't want to see that. Mm-hmm. You know, and the people that want to see that they're not watching because it's called headbangers ball. <laughs> um, but that was so. Yeah, the Headbangers Ball stuff was awesome, man. Hell yeah, you know. And mm-hmm. what's cool about that, and I'm just gonna a quick plug, but our first ever video premiered on Headbangers Ball when Jamie Josta was the host back in 2005, which was one of the worst videos ever. It's a vi- <laughs> the first Gizmachi video. It's for the song called The Answer, and we literally. They, they, the they, they chose the video. They had three three videos to choose from 
as the one that was going to you know go out. Well, somebody chose the one that we didn't want. It's literally the whole video is they took like two or three videos and put them on top of each other. And you can't even, it's, you know, for that, if you're going to do a couple parts like that, that's fine. But the song is like six minutes long. And the whole time it's just like overlapping video. You can't even concentrate. It's the most annoying video ever. And I was still pissed that they chose that one, but whatever. Can't disagree with you. Hey, we were on Headbangers Ball, so suck it. It's true. <laughs> That's it's awesome. True. So everyone in the chat, give us some videos that you grew up with that you loved. Some good, good songs too, please. Give me some videos. <laughs> one Chad, video, I'll, I'll tell you one. That, give uh, me a metal video. Give me some metal. We got to get metal. Come on. All right. One of my one of my most memorable videos, obviously the Enter Sandman video. That was the one that had the most um like anticipation you know i was 91 that's when i was like i just you know a few years early for a few years earlier had just gotten into like heavy heavy metal and in, in 91 it was van halen and metallica and anthrax for me that was like the three you know and megadeth too that was like those four bands were like that was it you know at the time i was listening to that stuff nonstop and pantera and stuff but you know, those, those handful of bands were it. So Metallica at that time, you know, it was the first album. The Black Album was the first Metallica album that was coming out when I was a fan. Like Justice was out and then I became a fan. So the Black Album was coming out. Hmm. I was like, oh my God, like this is going to be the cool. So I remember staying up, you know, the night that they premiered that video, recording it. I still have the, the original, uh, you know, time they premiered it on MTV. And the video was just so cool with the strobe lights and the truck. And it's just like, that was the coolest to me. And then the other one that I remember, as far as metal goes, was the Bogus Journey, Bill and Ted soundtrack, the Megadeth song called Go to Hell. Um, that's a very cool video because during the verses, Dave cool. Mustaine, this is the cool, I remember watching this when I was, let's see how I was, that was 92, right? So I was 15. I remember watching the video for that and he's, he's like in a bathtub or something or some sort of water and all that's above the water is like his, his nose and mouth or something. <laughs> and he's like singing, he's like looking up at the camera and he's underwater and it's like, I remember watching that like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> that was, you know, that was kind of a weird video. Man. So those two are my the ones that stick out the most as far as metal videos. So what Jay, what year did you get into Metallica? Um December, actually Christmas Day of <laughs> 1988 at 11 a.m. It like, might have been around 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> it might, it might have been. <laughs> yeah, cuz my cousin, my cousin Sean, we were playing he he got Nintendo with Castlevania on Christmas 88. Yeah. And he got the justice uh, tape and the hysteria tape. So all morning and all afternoon, we were just rotating those two tapes. And I just remember one time, Shortest Straw came on. We flipped tapes, put inside two of justice. And all of a sudden, I was like, I didn't want to admit it. I was like, oh, my God, I like this. <laughs> you know, I, didn't, I didn't want to admit it. <laughs> so do those songs, do they remind you of playing those video games, Castlevania? Sometimes, you know, certain 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 music will remind me of uh of certain things because yeah. for me when balance first came out van halen's balance in 95 i i was i was into uh uh what which which system was it super nintendo yeah mm -hmm. i was playing super nintendo and i and I, i'd be playing there was this one game you're it's like a, a racing game i can't My remember what it was called no you're like these little trucks and cars and you just race around this track. And actually one of the songs and it plays like rock songs, but it's not, you know, the original uh, versions. And one of the songs it plays is, uh, I think Iron Man, I think. Oh, really? Like the video Black game Sab version? Black Sabbath. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, like video game music style. So, but, but I was always turning the sound off. And just I listen to Balance. So when Balance first came out, so a lot of times, you know, Balance reminds me of sitting there playing Super Nintendo, playing you know that racing game. 
like it's burned into my head because I, I did it so much, you know. <laughs> so Brian, what about you? Oh, uh, well, I remember I used to play that game Doom. Remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would play that listening to, and I bought the second Rage Against Machine album on vinyl. I don't know why. I was, what, 14? And uh, 13, 14? And I would listen to that. My mom had a record player in the basement, and I would be playing Doom to that album. So I'll, like, so when you were saying that, you, yeah, I, I remember that vividly, just listening to that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of videos like you remember the prodigy, the fire starter. Remember that video? Who's fire starter? you fire starter. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> Who's that, fire starter? But that video scared the you fire starter. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was like late night and you see this crazy looking dude with the bouffant all messed up and he's in the, the sewers of London. I was like, fuck that. I'm never going to London. If there's that guy is down in the streets, oh, I'm good. <laughs> so I'll never forget that. And I was just walking all weird, like toward the oh, no thanks. That that video freaked me out. Um, but when I really started getting into heavier stuff, um, some videos when I was younger, I just love like Wish by Nine Inch Nails. That that's one of my all-time favorite videos. It's it's like a Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome type of thing. They're in a cage. Metal, or are we talking? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what, what Nine Inch Nails wish? That's what I'm saying. I thought I thought you were gonna mention metal videos that you. Uh, oh yeah. But um, so that that's you know that's a heavy ass song. But um, Blind by Corn. Yeah. That clown from Corn. That video. That was. That, awesome. I think that's that's one of their coolest videos, man. That's yeah. a very cool video. But blind when I first saw that, and just the um, when Jonathan Davis is just holding onto the mic stand and he's mm-hmm. head banging his dreadlocks is moving, and then like it slows down as like the song slows down, and like you know how is that like right in the middle of the song or the intro riff where it like it stops and then it kicks back in. Mm-hmm. So we come, so the video comes back up and then down and oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got oh wait no wrong one I meant. I meant that. Yeah. 13 year old me. Damn. So th- that's a great song. Um, I remember watching that video with my dad downstairs one time and he was just like, the hell are you listening to? <laughs> like, oh, I know, I know you're getting into the heavy stuff, but this is, uh, you know, geez. but also, yeah. Um, a, a great, well, Metallica one, even before I was into Metallica, I remember seeing that, video and i just thought it was eerie and that the guy at the end is just panning out he's in the bed he's got a mask on and help me sos i'll say that this is gonna mess me up for <laughs> a couple days yeah and it's it's mm-hmm. it's cool hearing um james hetfield talk about you know like his brother was the one i guess who uh watched the movie and like told him over the phone of like the whole story and whatever Mm-hmm. And it kind of stuck with them. And the smart thing that Metallica did is, you know, because if you use a movie or scenes from a movie in a music video, every time the thing gets aired, you got to pay royalties or whatever, right? They bought the rights to that movie, Johnny's Got His Gun, just because they were like, hey, we're going to put this in a movie music video. Let's, uh, what did they, so they bought the rights to the movie. So they're basically paying themselves really? royalties for it. Really? Yeah. So they so they could use that footage in that in that yep. in the uh, in that yep. video. Yep. Did Metallica purchase it or the record label? Metallica did. Hmm. Well, at the time, who knows? But they ended up they had they own all their music now. Okay. But I remember hearing because they did a um, it would have been the thirtieth anniversary when they came out with like the you know box whatever the uh collector's edition with all the extra you know stuff in it um they did an interview with one of the guys from rolling stone with that weird beatles haircut oh uh frick yeah yeah i think David. it is frick. he's he's awesome but i just can't get over the hairdo his, his um, hair yeah <laughs> but hey but the That's thing is you hair. know you know who he is he knows yeah. what he's doing he's marketing right he's got but, a hairdo that nobody else wants <laughs> 
Your boy has looked the same for like 25 years. <laughs> he has, man. He hasn't he aged at his, all. Sold his haircut. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, because he was interviewing him. And, and, and one of them said that, like they bought the rights to the movie at the time. And good thing they did because the, it was one of the biggest videos on MTV, mm -hmm. you know? So. Yeah. Um, another, some other metal videos, uh, five minutes alone, Pantera. Mm -hmm. I remember that video was the shit. That's just a good video. If you really watch it and you see dime playing and he's playing the low end on the B string or the B string, the E string, mm -hmm. and it's just shaking. Right? Yeah. Like they, you, you, you've seen that, right? Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I like you, you, you ever film your guitar in, in slow motion? No. Even in regular motion, sometimes you it, you can see like the string. Really, you never. Mm -hmm. Where, when you we get all, it sounds like a piano. Sounds well, like no, a piano string. Not even sound it, but you see the the string. You know, you see it shaking. It's awesome. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's just a lot of videos growing up, or, or uh, not necessarily metal, but in the mid '90s. I remember in that one summer when Vaseline by Stone Temple Pilots came out. That was always on rotation on MTV. Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. Like that, those are you know great songs. I love STP and Soundgarden. I know necessarily not the heaviest, but well, Soundgarden is. But SCP's got some real good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but that yeah. was uh kind of towards the end of uh you know, I know they still played videos for a little bit, but it, it really be became more of like you said, a reality show channel. And all that mm. crap. Well, you forgot the whole yeah. TRL era. Like that was videos at that point. I think were the biggest they ever were because like budgets for videos at the time were million dollars. Britney Spears, your girl, was out of her face right now. But she would have <laughs> million to two million dollar video budgets, right? But yeah, then because they knew that if you put out an awesome video on TRL, which everyone and their mom watched. Yeah. Right, mom. We watched that together. And, uh, <laughs> But, uh, or even it's my, usually when I, I would change the channel when that came on. <laughs> yeah. That was because it was all pop stuff. The majority of it was pop majority pop. of it, except for like corn, corn would always yeah, be but, there. But corn, come on, Brian, corn, I know you uh, love them and everything. And the, I love their first two albums, but it's whoever was huge at the time was, they, was on there. That was like when they were, became pop. You know, they had a very <laughs> big pop aspect to their music at that time. You know, well, that was the follow the leader album with uh, yeah. Pop the Life, Freak on Leash. But there's a lot of great songs off that album. Like It's On, you like that song. Come on, admit it. It's On is a good song because it's it's kind of like the old school corn, the way it's the way it gets built up and goes into it and stuff. But Yeah, like uh, uh, Dead Bodies Everywhere. It's a great song too. But there, there's a lot of really good songs. Justin, that's my, that's my jam off that album. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing is back then, music videos, shit. <laughs> well, they, they knew that if you had an awesome music video, you were going to sell records, man. You know? Yeah. So. But yeah, there was some really, really good videos. Um, Deftones, My Own Summer. You remember that video? You're, you're talking about the, the era of MTV where I was kind of like not Check watching out. as much, you know? Right. Well, there was, there was that's a great video. Did you ever see that video? What video again? My Own Summer. It's the uh, first song off of yeah. uh, Around the Fur. Yeah, we covered that song for uh, a summer. <laughs> <laughs> but guys in the chat, what um, any metal songs back in the day that just gives you the tingles and the jingles? Uh, my boys Tricky and Steve chime in here. You like? know, the best video ever is Michael Jackson's Thriller, but you know that's not even up for debate. Mass debate. <laughs> uh, you get no debate from me. That's that's a great video. I speaking of that, I, I don't know if you guys know in the chat, I love me some Halloween, hence I have pumpkins tattooed on my arm. But anyway. Oh, that was your arm. I thought that was your never mind. <laughs> but um when I was younger, around Halloween, it was right before Halloween or even on Halloween, they would have the making of thriller. It was like a half yeah. hour. Remember that? And mm -hmm. I remember just doing a lot of stuff for Halloween, having that in the background. And it's just, even to this day, just putting that on is just, it's great. 
It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan Landis, right, was the director? Yep. Jo- John mm-hmm. Landis. John Landis. That was 80. Was that 82? I think it was. That was the was last single that... off well, of the album. came out in 82, but I think the video was 83, right? Yeah. Or was it 84? 80. It, well, it depends because this has nothing to do with metal. But John Landis, he had directed a, a scene for, for the Twilight Zone, the movie. Mm-hmm. And this is in 1982. And his scene, what happened was the lead actor in that scene and two kids ended up getting killed. Yeah. During the scene? Really? Yeah. During during the actual scene. Um, it, it was a... Uh, a, a, a John Biel. Whoa. <laughs> what was his name? Vic? Vic Morrow. Vic Morrow was, was the actor. And and it was he, he's well, you guys can, can can look it up. Uh anyway, he ends up getting 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 killed. This helicopter comes down and crashes and lands right on them as yep, they're man. running as they're running across this uh uh like stream. And anyway, anyway, when that happened, right after that happened, uh, John Landis was in court for like a year. So depending on, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Holy crap. I didn't know that. That's yeah. horrible. Twilight Zone, the movie. If you never saw it, check it out. So, some of the scenes in that were, were remakes from some of the actual episodes, you know, from, from the 60s. Okay. Um, Holy but if, cow. But if, if you're into... Horrible. You're into Halloween. I mean, yeah, it's the same type of type of stuff. Holy shit. Love me some Halloween. Damn. So some uh some people in the chat, Thomas Lorena, Astro hey, Tom, Creep 2000. Tom, Tom Ball. That's Mike Ball's brother. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, I'm making sure I'm making sure you know. <laughs> James Gum, Morbid Angel God of Emptiness. I don't remember that video. Do you? Jay? No, but I'm sure I saw it. I, that 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 type of video only played on on uh, you know, on Headbangers Ball. Yeah. A couple other videos in sync. Bye bye bye. Um, <laughs> Jordan McGuire, Mashuga. Which Mash uh, which Mashuga video, Jordan McGuire? I'm trying to think. I don't even remember the first Mashuga video I ever saw. The first Mashuga video I saw was, uh... oh my God. Why can't I think of the damn name? Um, track two on uh, Chaos Sphere. Uh... I could play the whole song for you. Sounds like a circus music. Um... <laughs> um... <laughs> Ask the chat. Always ask. We got 61 watching this. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Is Jay older than his boner character? Yes, I am. New Millennium Cyanide Christ. Thank you, Majestic <laughs> PB&J. Yes. So, that music video is very funny because it's them on their tour bus. Like, literally, it almost looks like they were just goofing off one night. Like, like Jens Kidman, the singer, he's singing instead of a microphone, he's got a pencil, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, Thomas, the drummer, is just sitting back there, air drumming the whole time, you know, and a couple of the guys are going crazy. It's literally like, it probably cost them nothing to make that video, but it's funny, you know? That's why it's like, I, you know, these heavy metal bands, and we're having a little bit of a tiff about this in, in our own band, but, you know, like, you know, sometimes heavy metal bands, there's that fine line between... You know, you're playing heavy music. You want to be kind of serious. But also, like, I'm a goofy dude. If anybody knows me in real life, you know, I'm, I'm a goofball. I, I like to just goof off and have fun. I, I'm serious when I have to be. Right. But, you know, like, I don't want to just be, I'm in a heavy metal band, so I have to be serious. I can't laugh. And in and, and a hairbrush, I thought it was a pencil. Well, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> you know, so I know there's that fine line. You know, you don't want to be considered a, a joke band if you're playing heavy metal but i like having a a good time you know yeah i'm not gonna do interviews you know with like i'm all sad and yeah we play heavy music bro. <laughs> you know, not, nothing's funny man you know yeah well music videos they're meant to be entertaining yeah they're meant they're meant to keep your attention to, to go out and buy that record you know yeah. 
And the thing is, if you can make somebody laugh, you, you've that's 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 it. That's the key to everything. Sure. Is, is is humor. Yep. Like I love yep. Kill Switch Engage, but I do not like that Adam D goes on stage with a cape, some real high, you know, his <laughs> peaks are hanging out of his shorts. I'm not a big fan of that. Like when I when I see someone live, I want like I want to feel like I don't want to laugh. Like, you know, you see Gojira live. Hell yeah. A live concert is different. Right. You know, like so yeah. if you ever did that type of shit, me and you would be fighting right on stage. Uh no, I you know <laughs> like for instance, you know, when we uh like on Ozfest and stuff, every once in a while I'd wear my Hulkamania shirt, but I wasn't up there like posing and you know doing sure. this shit. You know? I might have done this between songs, but that was about <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, when you're performing, that's a different that's a different situation. You know, between songs, if you want to be you know tongue in cheek about something, that's fine. Right. But yeah, as far as like making it a, a spectacle about goofy stuff, that shouldn't be the focus. But Johnny, I think is right. You know, now, especially nowadays, like you go on YouTube and you type like you see, watch any kind of like heavy metal music videos. The ones that are just the bands playing and nothing else is going on. Like those are the ones you watch once and you never watch them again. There's got to be something you do in that video that you know, you want to see again, whether, whether it be a little bit of humor every once in a while mm -hmm. or just something cool that's yeah. happening. Action. Yeah. Some action, sort of action, yeah. you know, I mean, a music video really is, it's, it's like a little movie mm -hmm. and you're, the song is the soundtrack to that, to what you're looking at. Right. So like yeah, all the music that... videos, all the music videos that you remember are the ones that have stories to them sure. mm -hmm. or, or, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, one band that I love, they have some great videos, but they joke around a lot. Is Twelve Foot Ninja? They're great. Like they have uh, this one song called "One Hand Killing." Great song. You gotta watch the video's hilarious. Or uh, a song "Sick." It's great. You keep going back because it's funny, but also too they do rock out. So it's a, like a blend of serious and joking, but it's it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do have to do something that makes somebody want to come back to see it again. You know, if you're just I don't know. I mean, anybody can just can make a music video of you just pretending to play the song, you know? Well, Brown's yeah. fan says yeah. Anthrax. Anthrax does a great job of, they'll joke around in the videos, but also too, they're, they have some serious stuff as well. They're, they're great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And obviously you don't want to make it seem like you're forcing something either. You know, like that, that you, everybody knows somebody, that thinks they're funny and they're not. And then when they try to force the humor, it gets even worse. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, either you're funny or, or you're not. It's, it's really, it's really, although there's different, there's different levels. I think there's yeah. different, different brands of, you know, of, of humor, but the dry humor, which, which is uh very cool, but also, you know, some people don't don't dig on that, and uh, mm. and then there's the people that. But it's funny, the people that think. Now I'm going off on a tangent. Yeah, but the people. There's these things. <laughs> the people that. Uh, <laughs> what is it? The people that don't have a sense of humor are the ones that think they have like a really good sense of humor. You know, I have a sense of humor. Sure, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah. John B, even on air guitar, I struggle with some of the solos. Tell me, brother. You tell me. Wow. Air guitar is harder to play than real guitar. That's true. Yeah. That that that's the one thing. Do not if if anybody that plays guitar, if you take a break for a while, or if you just don't play for a while, don't don't air guitar <laughs> because it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a little while where where I I didn't really pick up a guitar, you know, because I I've, I've been so concentrated on doing you know this type of stuff, and and I would I would do you know I would air guitar, and I'd get frustrated because I'm like, well, first of all, I can't hear what I'm doing, but but it's this is it's not the same. <laughs> it's right now, Johnny's I'm, not even trying to be funny, and he's funny. This makes any kind of sense, <laughs> you know. Just play play an actual guitar. There you go. 
Because if you were playing air guitar and I was watching you, I'd critique you. I'm like, no, it's not there, man. You got to go up higher on the fretboard. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wrong note, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, actually air guitar actually does help if you don't have a guitar for one thing if you have something in your head you're trying you ever done this jay where you're, you're you have something in your head and you're trying to work it out you find yourself actually air guitaring mm -hmm. to try to be like if you can hear like like not necessarily the actual notes or the, the but the scale or the tones like you know this is lower this is higher have you, you ever done that i have not done that is that weird uh if it works for you it's not is weird that strange no, I figured I, can, I, had to, I had to play uh, Last Resort by Papa Roach like that. I was landscaping, and I remember holding like a weed whacker. I'm like, na -na 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 -na. <laughs> <laughs> Wayno. Wayno, yeah. get a T-shirt. You get a T-shirt. Oh, yeah, Wayno. Um, let, me, let me show you guys. He loves 12-foot ninja. Super talented and funny. Met them in Worcester, Mass. This handsome son of a bitch will be on your chest <laughs> soon. And by the way, that, the guy that's on that shirt, he's a dickhead <laughs> in real life. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> As mentioned at the beginning of the show, $5 Super Chats or more will get you a free, free Boner Jam shirt. What does a hundred dollar super chat get somebody? That guitar behind you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the two thousand uh, dollar super chat. Yeah. Get you that one. I'll be autographed <laughs> by myself and Jay and Johnny Bean. Awesome. Yeah. Nice, nice guitar, man. It's great. Uh, I returned mine. That's because that's what you do. Yep. I I got to get a refill, so you guys can talk metal. Okay, I'm gonna, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I got to pee. I'll, I'll, I'll be here, though. I'll be around. I got to oh. pee. Hold on. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll, uh, we'll sit here for... Let's see. Where is... There we go. So everyone in the chat, if you have not yet, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Support Johnny's channel. Subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know. You're doing something wrong, though. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Subscribe. Subscribe. You know, if you're brand new. You know, this is Metal Wednesday, which is Boner Jams and Jay's show where, where they talk all things, everything else, and then sometimes metal. <laughs> it's true. Just tonight. Just tonight. Um, no, nah, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, we do all all different types of stuff here. You know, we, we did a, a uh, like an 80s, 80s metal style show Tuesdays last night. Um, and then we do a, a Van Halen show on, on Fridays. You know, talking all things Van Halen. And if, if you like Van Halen, this is the place you want to be because Jay Hannon and I, we, we know everything. Okay. Uh, and then Saturdays is Saturday Night Live with your host, John BL. And that, that's that's kind of a, a wrap up of, of everything we talked about during the week and, and more. Like anything goes Saturday nights. And it's the most, out, you know, next to uh, uh, Metal Wednesday. <laughs> Saturday Night Live is the greatest time you'll ever have. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it really is a lot, a lot of fun. I have a obviously. I look forward to you know. I mean, this is only once a month, but um, my wife just texted me. Where do you keep going? Are you okay? Yeah, I said to change my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Saturdays, man, because it's just it's just so so much fun, and just uh, you know shooting the s for uh, three hours. And then, mm -hmm. you know, usually uh, Jeannie every once in a while will let me sleep in Sunday morning. And then I got to hear about it, but that's fine. <laughs> hear about it later. <laughs> yep. All right. I'll see you guys. I'll, I'll be here. All right, I'll okay. be around. Good deal. Bye. Be Je so Jesus repels me. Boner, do I like Static X? Um, not really. Some of the stuff I do. Some of the stuff I really don't. So there's your answer. Like Bled for Days, that song is a shit. I have no idea. There's um, some good stuff. So how, how are you going to know who super chatted and what their information is? I wrote it down. Oh, did you? Yeah. How are you going to get a hold of them? I'm going to call them. <laughs> At their place of business? 
the place of worship. No, um, generally on uh, Discord. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. So there's Wayno, Brandon Bud Cheeks, Music Therapy Laz. They're all my boys. We hang out. So okay. I'll probably just see him and give it to him. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, Brendan Butchik still has to see somebody about getting my old guitar back. <laughs> my 1990 – shit, what year was it? I figured this out because they only made – it's an RG760. RG760. And uh, I think it was a 1990 – 91, sorry, 1991 model. And I sold it like an idiot. Years ago, probably back in 2001 or two, I sold it. And uh, I regret it now. I want it back. But if I can't get it back, gotcha. I'll just keep uh, reminding Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> so music Therapy Laz asked, talking about metal outside of Gizmachi, because obviously it's the best metal album so far this year. It is. What's the best metal album of 2021 so far? Um, honestly, I've been so focused on Gizmachi stuff that I haven't really sat down to listen to a lot. Uh, actually, I lied. I listened to the new Chevelle album. That's not necessarily metal, it's hard rock. That is really good. If uh, you guys like Chevelle, if you like old school Chevelle, it's really good. It's a concept album. It's about aliens. Oh, really? Yeah, so you would like it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The concept's cool. Um, music's different. It's more, I don't want to say this and get yelled at because it's Chevelle, but it's more proggy for them. It's different. It's a lot of times Chevelle has shorter songs. No, they have some long songs on it. It's good. It's different for Chevelle. Really good stuff. So check it out. Yeah. I'll Randy Price, new Chevelle's good, right? I'll definitely check it out. It's good. You, and you first, tell me aliens, man. I'll, I'll listen to friggin', you know, uh, I'm trying to think of something I really hate. Um, what what Lincoln, don't I like? Lincoln Park. No, what don't you what do you like? No, what um, don't what what band don't I like or what group don't I like? Um Taproot. I have nothing against Taproot. Okay. What band do you like just not like corn now? No, I'm I'm never mind. <laughs> <laughs> if if no, all right. Let's not let's not get crazy. So I checked out the three new Gojira songs. Yeah. Um, the one, Imagine Dragons, there you go. If Imagine Dragons came out with an alien album, I probably wouldn't listen. <laughs> They're so bad. Chevelle, Chevelle doesn't bother me, so I'll check them out. So anyway, I had a chance to, all three in a row today, listen to, I listened to them three times in a row, all three. Okay. With Jeannie in round two? No. Oh, okay. I uh, hit her in the closet. <laughs> So, where the hell is it? Recently played. Here we go. Um, man, I listened to a lot of 80s stuff on here. I had, we had CNC Music Factory on today. Did you? What, uh, what song? Well, the, the two good ones. The uh, Gonna Make You Sweat and Here We Go. You sweat to you. Here we go. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> bang. Bang them. I love that guy's voice, too. Oh, Freedom Williams is a bang. He's bang. awesome, man. Bang. Um, <laughs> What the hell is it? Okay. Born for One Thing is the one song out of those three that really sticks out. It's There's more going on. It's a little more up-tempo, obviously. Yep. Because the other two, obviously, they sound like Gojira. Gojira is one of those bands that they have their own sound. You know it's them the second you hear them. Yep. And uh, that's obviously great. It's hard to do that, especially in the world of metal. Yep. Um, it's hard to sound like yourself, especially everybody using the same, you know, having the same mixes and all this other crap. Mm-hmm. But that one song really sticks out to me and, and is like an extra uh, evolution, if you will, of that band. And uh, I definitely dig that stuff. That's a great song. The um, I figured out how to play it. It's not that I figured it out like it was like a secret. But uh, Yeah, like you figured out Eruption or something by ear. Right. But the uh, – so this song is my Gojira uh, – this guitar is my Gojira guitar. So it's tuned to drop C. Mm-hmm. Don't so, play. Uh, you, you had Johnny flagged. That'll be the last it. metal show we ever do. The uh, the beginning is just you know a harmonic, so it's just going up and down the uh, the E string. But then uh, 
the beginning is just old school Gojira. You know, the quick riff with the open. Yeah. You know, and then uh, that breakdown is so good. See, that's the thing. They can do like the uh, that that scrape thing that they do. Yeah. And it's kind of like now it's become a Gojira thing. Like, oh, if somebody else is doing that, oh, it's Gojira. But they can do it, and it's like hell yeah, it's awesome. A lot of bands so, do it now. Yeah, I know, but it's it's that's you know, if that's anybody Gojira. else does it, like oh, that's Gojira. That you know, it's like if somebody else does the bridge bending stuff, you know, <laughs> you know who came up with that shit. Um, but yeah, that one song is uh is really cool. But man, I I've really been listening to, and you know this. I mean, the majority of music that I listen to is uh a lot of the '80s stuff. It's weird. I've not really uh, seeked out very much new heavy metal, not new metal. I'm talking about like new heavy metal music that has come out. Yep. But the one thing that I've been doing for a while now is finding like eighties hard rock that I never heard before, you know, and, and like, wow, this is kind of cool. Like, how did I miss this? And I'll mention it to my brother. And they're like, Oh, I remember hearing about those guys, but I never listened to them either. And then he's listened to some of the stuff now. But uh, anyway, I don't know what it is. I've just become, I don't old. know, old, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And plus, I don't know if it's, I hate saying this, but maybe a part of it is like a competitive thing. You know, like I'm in a heavy metal band. We just put out an album. And... Uh, I don't want to hear anybody else's album thinking it's better than better than ours. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So what do you uh what have you been listening to lately that uh you haven't really been talking about? <laughs> hey now, fruitcake Tony. Hey now. What's up, Tony Fruitcake? Um, yeah, the new Gojira stuff has been great. Born for one thing, that song. Mm. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's a great song. The uh, Amazonia that one came out last week, right, guys? That's a that's a really cool song. That's a lot of not like Sepultura type of feel. Um, Amazonia, right? So it's about the deforestation. Let's talk about the environment for a minute, guys. No, um, <laughs> where's the snore button? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it's a cool video too. But that song was great, and that actually that song is tuned to d standard so it's not drop tuning like they normally do mm -hmm. but that main riff is is pretty cool it's a it's a good song and then uh another world that came out i think in august or september that song's awesome i really like it i don't know gojir is one of those bands to me that can do no wrong like i haven't heard a song I'm like man I, I i don't like this i just i'm a big gojira fan so whatever they put out generally i'm, I'm feeling so Whatever they put out, you want to put in. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like Mastodon, same. Um, Mastodon, Gojira, uh, obviously Slipknot. Like there's just, you know, like everything that they do, I'm like, I, I really like it. Well, those are three bands right off the top right there that that have their own unique sound. Mm -hmm. You know it's them. Whether whether you like them or not, you can't you can't deny the fact that when you put those bands on, whatever album it is that they that they have, instantly, you know it's them. Yep. Yep, you're correct, Robot Master Switch. It's um, the, the singer is huge into the environment, so um, you are correct. Um, but look, well, Mashuga doesn't sound like anyone else. And, <laughs> yeah, um, a lot, but a lot of bands sound like Mashuga. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But yeah, the last Mashuga album I didn't I didn't love though, and that's a band that you know I really really like. But again, uh, hopefully this album, what because there uh, it was a article that came out last week that uh they're in the studio recording right now Did you yeah see that? they posted a picture on their social media of uh of in the studio and it's got a ibanez guitar but it's an eight string and i'm like no no don't come on go back to the sevens guys go back to the sevens you know the eights are uh i don't know i just think it's getting too much you know like you can't if anybody, I know Tom, uh, Thomas Lorino has an eight string guitar, but I just feel like, you know, you can't really, you know, if you have a, uh, a seven string, this is standard tune. So it's B, you know, 
hitting chords on the low part. You know, they're chords. You can hear every every note. Right. But on an eight string guitar, you can't. You can't. It just sounds like blah, blah, blah. so you have that's why you hear any bands that are using like eight string guitars, anything played on that low string is like a single note riff, like single note riffs, single rip, yeah. Single riff notes. And it, it ends up sounding you know, very mashuga ish when you do right. that. And Don't get me wrong. Meshuga has written some dope. Oh, God, dope yeah. Riffs on the eight string, like Demerge. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that riff in the middle of the song. Oh, so good. You're like Perpetual Black Second from Nothing. Like, oh, my God. You know, like all that stuff. Because I, I, I prefer kind of the more up tempo. Mashuga, and if anybody's you know heard Gizmachi stuff, you know we definitely take a little bit of influence from that earlier, earlier Mashuga. Um, but I just you know after a while I just feel like it's very monotonous with the single note riffs on the low uh, whatever the hell string it would be that eighth string. Yeah. Um, and especially since it's been so long now that a lot of these bands have been doing it. Now you got Dream Theater. You know, John Petrucci going to play an eight string on the new Dream Theater album. I'm like, oh my God, why? Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll surprise me. Maybe it'll be cool. Obviously, Petrucci's a friggin', you know, virtuoso, one of the greatest guitar players, but I don't know, man. I just feel like it's not as, uh, you know. It's just the tempo. A lot of the songs are the same tempo. It's all, it's a sim, similar patterns throughout the song. So I don't know. Hopefully they'll do something different. Yeah. I sure hope but, so. um, yeah. Robot Master Switch, make sure you hop in real quick in regards to uh, new Gizmachi. What do you think? I have to I have to say, I've been listening to Gizmachi pretty frequently <laughs> lately. The uh, the second album is a lot tighter. Well, Omega Cloud is, is a lot tighter rhythmically than the imbuing. Your thoughts? Mine? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Randy Price says, I bet the JP158 stays in fucking tune. Not if I buy it, it won't. It won't stay in tune if I buy it. And he'll go back. Um, yeah. No, I, I think it's just, it is, it's just better. You know, I know everybody thinks their new album is better than anything they've done, but it is. Everything's tighter. It's more mature. Mm -hmm. Obviously with Bjorn on, on the vocals, it's, it's. It can't be messed with. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm being, uh, you know, thinking my my poop don't stink, but <laughs> you know, I, I don't think it's a uh, the new Gizmachi album. There's not much that can f with it, especially what's coming out now. It's true. In the modern era of metal, I'll put it up against anything. So let's put it up against an album that dropped the same day. New Rob Zombie. <laughs> Well, the guitar playing on the new Rob Zombie is obviously better than than the Gizmachi playing because John Five is an absolute animal on guitar. He is an animal, but he's restricted. It's very – He plays to the music, and I, I respect that. If, if a guy that can play that good or that well that can play like John Five can play, for him to be able to you know, put, set the ego aside and play what is needed for that music – right. I respect the hell out of guys that can do that. I mean, I if I was that good, I wouldn't be able to do that. I'm like, no, I'm playing over everything, dude. Shut up. Mm -hmm. You're going to finish the, the verse is over, bro. Come on. <laughs> I love John Five. He's great. But unfortunately, he's in probably one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my life. Ed, I think okay, we talked about it before. I haven't, I haven't listened to it. I haven't listened to it. Educated Horses by Rob Zombie is one of the worst piles of shit I have ever <laughs> heard in my life. And I, you know, and I would say this Rob Zombie face. I would. I would say all this to your face. I think Rob Zombie's a man. He loved Halloween. So we have a kinship there. The first Halloween movie he made, I thought was pretty good, man. It, it was great. Was you know, he's in the horror movies. The uh, The stuff that he's done is great. But some of his songs are so bad, so bad. It just. Mm. But, but uh, hey, he plays what he likes. God bless him. You know. God bless Rob Zombie. Cheers to you, Rob Zombie, with pop, 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 pop. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
what else have we got? There's some, there's something else to say about John five, but I'm. Well, there was something that you had in the uh, in the notes about like what guitar have you been playing? Um, is that was that in there or was that an old show notes that no, I? That was probably an old show, but sure. I I, ha- I was gonna have an unboxing tonight. Oh, that's right. What happened? It didn't come. She didn't. <laughs> So, no, I was waiting for my new uh, Jazz Master, and unfortunately, it hasn't arrived yet. The, I told you. I know. I know, but I, I was, like, so pumped. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you, you've you been pumped for the past two months because initially it was supposed to come – it was supposed to ship on – what the hell was it? I thought it was January, but the text message was February or vice versa. Right. Yeah, so it got pushed back, and now pushed back to April 6th it's going to ship now. So we'll see what happens. And then what I was going to do is I yeah, just top- new, new Yankee candles, and I was going to unbox them for everyone's pleasures, but I decided not to do that. But I did get new strings. Which, oh, you got the NYXLs, huh? Yeah. 11.52. Right there, what, right there. What guitar are you putting those on? Um, I'm going to put this on my Strat that's tuned to drop A. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, yeah, and I – and when I get the new Jazz Master, I'll put that on one of them because I'm going to have them both tuned to drop B. Wait a second. Yeah. Do you have a drop A with a 52? Mm-hmm. Is it like a rubber band on there? Bang. Yeah. You got to put so, like a 56 I'm, on there, man. I might. Yeah. Um, but but I do like these strings. I already have them. So I might go to a 56 on it. Hmm. Man. It's, it's good. Yeah. So I have... I'm lazy. I, I hate tuning guitars, guys. So what I do is just buy other guitars. And so, you mean you hate move, changing strings, or you hate tuning them? Both. Like, no, I just you know with, with the locking tremolo, I don't have to do anything. This is perfect. I'm good to go. Oh, okay. You know, mm-hmm. so I just pick it up and I'm good. Okay. So I just get I just get new guitars because I'm lazy, <laughs> and then I just have them tuned differently and. Yeah, and Jay and I have talked about it a million times. And yeah, Brian gets mad at me because I have like what three seven strings. Yeah, I have three seven strings, and they're all tuned the same. I know. I was like, just t- just change it up. Just drop it a step. Go to like tune to a standard. The problem is that when when Jimmy, the Gizmachi drummer, my brother in law, when he came down here uh, for Christmas, he recently purchased a um. Well, I guess not recently. It was last year. He purchased a Dino Cazares Ibanez signature guitar and had Craig Stoff go from CHS uh, Customs, repaint it for him and stuff like that. And it's tuned to A standard, you know? Mm -hmm. And I played it, and everything that I played was corn. That's all I wanted to play on the fucking thing was corn riffs. And I'm like, okay, I can't tune one of my guitars to that. Cause all I'll sit up and hear is play, you know, that's all I want to do. There you go. That's all I want to play is corn stuff. So I can't, I can't do it. So I'm gonna have to pick a different tuning if I do that, you know? Yeah. But I just, I just, here's the thing. And I don't want to go on off on a, on a rant on this, but you know, if you hear the Gizmachi stuff, every song we have the same tuning, it's B and then E through E. So it's a standard seven string tuning. But there's always, you know, nothing like no song is the whole time like in in the key of B. Like there's songs where we virtually will not hit like the open B string. Well, like on the first fret or something, it'll be in C or it'll be like, you know, it it moves all over the place. So I feel like B is low enough for us. Yeah. I don't really. And obviously when we want to go lower, we just grab that shit in the back. Burr, you know, drop it down. Um, but I mean, maybe, you know, some people use different tunings for like different inspiration. It'll make them write something a little different than they're not normally, you know, used to writing. So mm-hmm. I understand that, that uh, aspect of it as well. Yeah. One time I was hanging out with seven dust and I asked them next, they'll have half an album is drop a and the other half is drop B. Mm-hmm. What, why do you decide to go with like, this song is drop a, we're going to go with it. Like, how do you do it? And they're just like, we don't know. We'll just play with it and it just sounds cool and we'll just stick with it. And it was a lot simpler of an answer than I was anticipating. I was waiting for this whole, you know, dissertation on what we're doing. We're going to play everything drop A for two weeks. And no, 
it was just like, yeah, no, it just sounded cool like that. And we just went with it. So. Well, no, it's probably the same. Like, dude, if you have different tuned guitars behind you, you know, one night you might be like, oh, I'll pick up this one tonight. That's tuned to uh, fart sharp. <laughs> fart and, sharp. Uh, and you'll just start playing stuff and you'll write something in that key. And then Jimmy's in here. You might, the next night you might grab another guitar, drop R. Jimmy likes that drop R tuning, you know, same type of thing. And you all of a sudden different tunings will get different things out of you. You know, if I'm playing a six string, I've been playing my gem a lot lately and it's standard E to E. And all I want to do is play, you know, Metallica riffs and anthrax riffs and stuff like that. Um, you know, and I'll start, I'll start writing like thrash riffs on that guitar because that's what it's tuned to. And that's, you know, so I get it. If you have different tuned guitars, you're going to write different, uh, and a certain riff that's in a certain tuning won't sound the same if it's played in a different tuning. Like, you know, yeah. it, it's just how it is. Also too, that's why I like putting different strings on different guitars as well, just to get a different vibe. You know, I just don't want to have, let's say seven guitars, same string, same setup, but it's just a little bit of different tuning. I just, I want to make everything a little different. So when I play that and I'm playing, let's say Lamb of God or, um, Gojira, like it's it's tight, it's it's metal, it's heavy, and it's it's cool. So um, yeah, so when I get my other jazz master, I'm gonna I'll sw I'll have two of them tuned to drop B, but I'll put different strings on it just to, just to see how it feels. That's weird. I never really thought of that before. Putting different, like having a guitar with the same tuning, but different gauge strings, that would mess me up big time. Cause I feel like I need the same type of tension. Um, and even, even when I'm changing guitars, like, you know, if a guitar feels like it, the strings are a little too tight. Yeah. You know, I do like tight, but not when I'm playing guitar, you know? Uh, so. TK asks, is Gizmachi a thrash band? I'm gonna go with no. Uh, Jay, how would you describe Gizmachi? Oh man. Um, I guess in modern music or modern metal terms, maybe like progressive groove metal. I don't really know. Heavy as shit, but with a lot of melodic aspects to it. Trip hop. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hardcore rap. <laughs> Check it out. I mean, CK, crap. go on, uh, if you have any streaming platforms or even go on YouTube and check out some of the new, uh, the newer stuff. I think, uh, you know, you'll get the idea. So Jay, there was on um, turn. Am, am I right? Turn to dust. The uh, in the middle section, you grab the bridge and you drop it a step to play that one part. Is that correct? It's more than a step. I think it's like a step and a half, maybe. I forget what note we tuned down to. It's like if you're tuned to B, so you're gonna go down to like F sharp. What is it down to? Let's go B, then A, then the F sharp. I think it's that. It's that tuning right there. Who's got a tuner? Hurry up. Wow, this guitar is singing right now. Yeah, dude. It's like shaking the whole room. <laughs> Boom! Shake the room. So when you wrote when you wrote that part, or when you guys wrote that part, what made you decide to do that? Like, hey, I'm, let's just grab the bridge here. Let's drop it. A little further the ellie vi uh custom sticker job um i honestly don't know um i i don't know when me and mike were working on that song together um i think we wrote like i came up with that drum pattern which was kind of by accident i don't want to get into details and bore everybody with how we came up with that drum beat but it was so like off off kilter that i was like man how you know, I just, it's one of those things you can't really explain. It's just all of a sudden we're like, you know, instead of doing like a riff that moves around with the bridge, why don't we just drop the shit out of it and just ride a low, you know, chug with it. Um, and that's what it is. And, uh, you know, I don't want to give away too many secrets, but for something like that, a studio trick, right? And I know other bands do this as well. Professional bands do this type of stuff. We're like, 
let's just say, um, you know, an open string. And I know it's we got we're running out of time here, but an open string always. And I don't know how new these strings are; they're probably pretty old. But you know, if you play, for instance, like the uh, you know the G string, open sounds a lot better than the fifth fret. Right. So in the studio, you might retune your guitar. So like if you're playing a chord, a clean chord or something like that, with uh you know, and one f one string might be fretted. You might actually retune your guitar a certain way so that you're hitting that note on an open string, you know, just to give it in, in the studio. There's no rules. Do whatever it takes to get something to sound the best it can be. So, for instance, on that part where I mentioned or Brian was talking about where we drop the bridge to that whatever note. I actually tuned the guitar to that note and just played it. You know what I mean? So there was no fighting with the other guitar. It was all. I tuned the guitar to that note. But if we were ever to play it live, we can't do that, obviously. We'd have to drop it like a pair of panties. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Which is cool. Yeah. That is cool. Definitely a cool part. It's a little different. You can hear, too, where it's... Oh, we, yeah, we burn, you know, on, on the recording, it's actually um, us pulling the bridge down. But mm -hmm. the once the part starts, you know, we stopped it in tune to that low ass note. Um, so sure. That's cool. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for asking. Pretty pretty <laughs> neat part. So uh what well, we have a few minutes left. So the end of our show, normally we uh we have a little homework assignment for everyone. We talk about stuff that we're listening to and then you guys should check out. But before we do that, make sure again, any super chat over five bucks gets you a free boner jams t-shirt with some of my beard shavings embedded into the shirt as well for you for everyone there so five dollars beard, beard shavings or pew? Beard, yeah, yeah I, I had to tighten up i'm getting my bouffant trim tomorrow too so i gotta get mine done man i'm looking like a i gotta i got i'm just been lazy looks good you look good though you're handsome as hell so um so at the end of the show, we generally like to talk about some songs that we want you guys to check out. And then uh, let us know what you think in the comments, on Discord, on the fans only, only fans website. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where uh, we have Jimmy, Jimmy Hatcher. Uh, we'll also, I'll attach the link for his. So, uh, Jay, what songs are you listening to you want people to check out? All right. So this isn't metal, but it's Gizmachi related. Okay. So on March 12th, the Gizmachi album came out. Obviously, definitely check that out. But um, also on that same day, somebody who, who did a guest appearance on the Gizmachi record, Larry Mitchell, re-released this CD or this album on the streaming platforms and his uh, Bandcamp page. So... Well, this is the album for me that virtually was the uh, turning point in my uh, life as far as playing music because it was this album that made me want to buy a guitar. So definitely, this is my pick of the month. Larry Mitchell, on, on Spotify, it's like Larry Mitchell 1990 or something like that. And you'll see this cover right there. This is my, it's one of the best solo records. There you go. It's one of the best solo records, solo guitar records ever. It really is. It's very musical. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, shredding for the hell of it. Obviously, there is shredding in there, but it's it's in there at the right times and the right spots in songs. It's not just a bunch of noodling. Wee, 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 what do they call it? Little, little. Uh, little Italy. Yeah, <laughs> Little Italy. It's a very musical record. Every song is great. There's no filler, all killer, no filler. And uh, it's right up there with uh, with Passion and Warfare as far as just being a great solo guitar record. It really is. So if you haven't listened to it, you have to do it. You have to listen to this record. Okay. That's my pick of the month. Go ahead. What's your, what do you got? You have anything else? Just no, that's, that's it. Well, the Gizmachi record that came out three weeks ago or two 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 and a half weeks ago and Larry Mitchell. 
Okay. Oh. I just got a picture of my little boy downstairs. Go ahead. Um, so the <clears throat> an album that came out last year, which I really loved, Lamb of God's new album. There's a song off it called Resurrection Man, which is one of my favorite songs off of, of 2020. Mm-hmm. Song is the shit. Check it <laughs> out. We get a little blurg in there from uh, Randy Blythe. Check it out. The song is really good, real heavy. The uh, middle section is a lot of fun to play. So if you're played a guitar and you like that song, it's a lot of fun to play. Learn it. It's cool. What's the tuning of it? Uh, C. Drop C. Okay. So I've been playing on this song. I'll give you guys a tutorial if you want in a minute. No, I'm joking. Um, great song. Definitely check it out. Uh, another song, non gizmachi related. I'm going to go with the new Chevelle. There's a um, new album called Narachias. It's a, it stands for, I forgot what it stands for, but it's, it's real cool. Um, the first two songs, Verut is a uh, instrumental that goes into So Long Mother Earth. Really, really, really good stuff. Check it out. Um, Chevelle, it's, it's really good. Um, it's different for them. Heavy, uh, longer songs too. Uh, they w- definitely went out of their element. It's good. It's really good. Um, and then my last song, I'll go with, uh, since Gizmachi's album dropped this month, we'll go with, hmm, I'm going to go with Inner Vision just because I was talking to Jay about it the other day. And you can actually hear Jay's voice in the middle of the song. So you guys check it out. It's pretty cool. It goes into a really cool part of the song. That's the only that's the only time on uh that my voice is on any any Gizmachi songs. And it was just me in the background when vocals are being tracked after uh I think Mike got a part or something, he nailed a part. I just yelled, yes. yes! <laughs> and I put it I put it right on the spot. Um it's cool. Tom Tom Marino is saying, check out Vola, V-O-L-A, Head Mounted Sideways. That's a great band too, by the way. Definitely check their stuff out. Um, What else? I was going to say something when you were talking about something. Oh, John B. is saying, contact me if you want my guitar collection. Do you have any Ibanez guitars? A universe, preferably. John B, contact me if you have any have any Ibanez guitars. <laughs> but if you have a Kiesel, just just throw it in the garbage because that's where those things belong anyway. Yeah. Thanks for the topic. We'll talk about that some other other time. <laughs> that's what those are. <laughs> yeah, that's if you plug one of those in, the second you try to play anything, that's what it does. It just goes. <laughs> Since we're talking about it, real quick, did you <laughs> did you even play it when you got it? Yeah, I played it. Did you like it? In all seriousness, I tried to. Um, you know, when and everybody that plays guitar, you'll know this. Like when you pick up an instrument, you know if you bond with it basically instantly. Um, and obviously, the fact that it was uh, salmon pink instead of hot pink pissed me off. Period. So um, it, the thing wouldn't stay in tune to save its life. Uh, they didn't know how to wire a kill switch. Um, even though testy switch was awesome, they forgot the headstock, which was yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a couple other issues with it. Like there was a blemish in the paint job. Um, which I was, you know, if the if the color was right, I would have been fine with overlooking it. But uh, whatever. But no, it just it was one of those guitars where like it didn't have the uh didn't have it. You know? It was like sterile. It was a sterile guitar. Mm-hmm. It felt very hard. You know what I mean? It didn't like it didn't fit with me. <laughs> you see, Robot Master Switch has the best explanation of the guitar. Kiesel's like those bright red two hundred dollar European jeans. They look cool enough for me. <laughs> That's pretty good. Those are like the nut huggers. It's like super <laughs> tight, right? 
Yeah. And and the fact that when uh when when uh that jag off sent my guitar pickups back to me because I put my own pickups in that guitar. Well, they did it. I had bare knuckle, which is awesome, ship mm -hmm. my my pickups directly to them to install into the guitar. Um when it came time for for uh Jeff Weasel to take the L and send my stuff back, all my electronics, the pickups were smashed and cracked. One of them actually didn't work because I, I ended up giving those pickups to Jimmy, my brother-in-law, to put on to put in one of his guitars. And when he uh when he put them in, one of them didn't work. One of them would, would not not only were they cracked, were the bobbins cracked on both of them and scratched up, but one of them actually didn't work. So they sabotaged my pickups. Didn't they smell too? And came back with like the essence of genitalia. Like you just. <laughs> oh, you like, no, these up here? Yeah, no. no, that was that one guitar that you received. Oh like, yeah. The, uh, the Jason Richardson, the music <laughs> man, Jason Richardson. Yeah. Yeah. That thing. Oh, I don't know what the hell that thing went through before they. Uh... Ugh. No. no. I should do, I should have a reality show about. Returning guitars. Returning guitars and getting stuff that's that's screwed up. Send you it back in and add it again. Well, you should you should see like sometimes you know I'll be on the phone. It hasn't hasn't happened in a while, but you're on the phone with a company or somebody telling a story or talking about something, and Jeannie will just be like, "Oh God, here we go again." <laughs> you get all worked up about it. Oh, I do. I get fired up. You know, you know me. I do know you. Get, you call me and you tell me about it. Yeah, I get I get pretty fired up. When I, when I need to, um, Lars guitar says, Jay, did you keep your JS muscle car purple with the Sustainiac? Yes, it is. It's that one right back there. You can see the neck. Damn it. Wrong way. That one right back there. And I actually think I'm going to sell it because I want to get a different guitar. So it's not here for long there. Lars guitars. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great guitar, but I need to sell something to get a guitar that um i'm not going to be able to get without selling something so i'm not selling that because i want to i'm selling that because i need to need to, <laughs> need to. Oh. yeah yeah great song uh, my man brian spaulding's here brian spaulding hello hey brian hello. um but you came at the end of the show because we're done so thank you for uh for showing <laughs> <laughs> just rewind it Again, everyone, make sure hit the thumbs up, subscribe. If you want a Boner Jam shirt, let me know. I'll take care of you. Maybe not. If I don't like you, then probably not. But uh, I'll take care of you, <laughs> John. John, you want to uh, bring the executive producers back on? <laughs> Two hundred dollars, my final offer. <laughs> add add a, a five somewhere in there and a zero at the end of it. There we go. There's just so many names. We can't even. Jesus repes me, though. He's, he's there. He's here tonight, too. Robot Mass Switch, he's here as well. Brian Spaulding. We got the whole cast and crew. Ben Tom's not here. I haven't seen him. The hell, Ben Tom. Well, I, Johnny, I have a great idea. Gargutz was here. Johnny, send me that those screenshots of all the names. Mm -hmm. I'll record them into Pro Tools, and then I'll speed it up like the uh, Micro Machine. <laughs> So yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so it might take me five minutes to read all those names, but I'll, I'll make it so it's uh it's like at the end of a commercial when they all that the fine print they read it real quick. Yeah, I'll do something like that so you can just play the audio during those screens where it's super super fast. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, thank you, everyone. thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks Thank everyone. you, everybody. <laughs> yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Another great Thank you. Metal Wednesday. <laughs> we'll see everyone in a month, which will be... Hey, what's the April, date on that one? April 28th. Ooh, the day after my birthday. Not that it matters anymore. When you get old, you could give two shits. Jay will be 62. <laughs> He'll be filing for Social Security. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll Birthdays. be by then. Birthdays are horrible now. Yeah. Not again? that I would know. Again? Right, Gargutz? There you are. I see you. You guys yeah. watch Gargutz Entertainment. Check okay. check him out, man. They 
They, they, they do some crazy stuff. Gargots, what's your OnlyFans link? Can you put it in the chat here? So we can <laughs> <pick it up? laughs> what's your show called, Gargots? Uh, uh, we're not late. You are. Is is that the title of it? That's, that's pretty good. Isn't that a porn? So, something. <laughs> something. Something like that. He'll say it in a second. But yeah, he's funny, man. I was I was on with Gargets Entertainment and uh, and Alex Radford a while back. It's not late. You're late. There we go. Right, cool. That's that's his show. There you go. Good. Good stuff. So again, guys, check out uh, Friday night, Mr. Bean, Lord Hannon for Van Halen Friday evening. Then on yes. Saturday night, we'll have Saturday night with your host, John Bull. Then you have Neander Paul. <laughs> yes. And, and Cobra Kai's drawings of you guys is amazing. Yeah, I, I mentioned uh, we got to get one of you, man. We got to get him to uh, to get you in the mix. I'll get me, get me, and I'll get a T-shirt of that. Would be great. <laughs> I, I love Caleb's picture too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great. man. There's there's one. It's this one. What is that? John Bl's Saturday Night Live. Can you can you guys notice? What what's the what's the the major factor in this? The, the outlier in the bottom right, the mouth. What's up with our mouths? <laughs> <laughs> Every we, we are all based. I'll tell you guys, we are all based on John Bl. Oh, no. oh my God! It's all John Bl. <laughs> we are. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's great wow, that is nuts so guys make sure everyone checks out john bl Saturday Night live and then on tuesdays you have your man johnny bean with neander paul and mr mancuda john, Mancuda. john mancuti there we go <laughs> <laughs> that's great cobra kai is the man you see him in the in the Discord? I do. I send him right. no. So well, then tell him, tell him to friggin' get on the ball. He's on the ball with everything else. We gotta have a uh I think we've done enough metal shows. I, I just feel weird. Be like, hey man, can you make a cartoon? I know, I know. <laughs> I know. It's like it's, hey man, can you make up a nickname for me? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> something cool, something strong, something yeah. masculine. Definitely. Like 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 Big Johnson. You know, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> yeah yeah cobra kai thank you so much for for everything man yeah it's it's great yeah we got to get that uh custom colonel's tin going with uh with the Saturday night crew on it <laughs> John good stuff i bet he yeah. really hates all you guys when all this stuff comes up he might he, he might, might show up at somebody's door he has a list just like in uh, Billy Madison with just everyone's name on it, just ready. Yep. <laughs> so, it's great. Well, last week he was in rare form, man. He uh, he had a couple sips, too, not too many, but he had a couple sips where he got a little bit of liquid courage, and he was giving it. He was okay. giving it back, and I like that, John B.L. Was he sweating? Sweating to the <laughs> oldies, or was he all right? No, he was fine. He just he wasn't taking as much shit as he, as he normally does. He was giving it back. I was like, Good yes. Him. Good for him. Yeah. My favorite aspect of Saturday nights too is with uh, the captain. When he comes in, you can barely even see that he's there. It's just so dark in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's just like, everyone's so bright. Then you got the captain who's just hiding in the shadows. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good stuff. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll catch you guys Wednesday night, and we'll see. You, well, you'll see me in a month, and uh, yeah, yes. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, and the rest. Bye. We'll see you Friday.
Bye. Bye.